Welcome back. We've all heard about the power of a mentor when it comes to our careers, but what about a social mentor? And with January being National Mentoring Month tonight, we talked with Elise Ash. She's the founder of Fruitful Fertility, which is a one-on-one -on -one infertility mentorship app. And she explained why these types of relationships are becoming more popular. Okay, so I've obviously heard of a professional mentor. I've had one or two in my life, but uh, tonight we're talking about social mentorship, which I have not heard of. So fill us in on what that is exactly. So a uh, social mentorship is similar to a professional mentorship. We all know um, someone at work or maybe a past boss or coworker who's kind of taken us under their wing, shown us the ropes, given us feedback on our resume. And having a social mentor is pretty similar. It's having a relationship with somebody who's outside of your family, your friends, your regular network, but who you connect with over something. And usually it's a more sensitive personal topic. So whether you're going through divorce or a medical diagnosis or grief or infertility or miscarriage, it's someone who has a similar experience, but has the empathy and wisdom to kind of help guide you along the way and support you in a way that your regular friends and family might not be able to. So do you recommend um, trying to find someone who's outside of your profession so you don't slide into talking about work? Yeah, for sure. And I think for social mentorships, it's good to have somebody who's way outside of your network because in that sense, you can be a little bit more candid. You're not always worried about who you know in common or how they might perceive you. You can be really open and vulnerable. You can share those deep, dark feelings. I know for the fertility community, sometimes if you're you know, anxious about going to a baby shower, you might not wanna tell your aunt or cousin, like I'm having weird feelings about going, but you might be totally okay sharing that side and that vulnerability with somebody you don't necessarily know personally. Um, walk us through what you would talk about with this person, like how the relationship looks, obviously it'd be different for everyone, but where do you even start? What do you talk about? Yeah, so I think a great place to start in general is finding the community that you really are looking for. And the more niche you can get, the better, because the more similar the experience and the background and the values, the more safe you can feel in that relationship, the less worried you have to be about someone triggering you or offering you a suggestion that doesn't align with your values or belief systems. So I think you kind of start these relationships a little slowly, you dip your toe in, you share a little, they share a little, and you grow it and develop it over time. It can take a little while to develop a rapport, but then all of a sudden you're sharing some really great parts of yourself and getting support and having someone Check in and make sure you're doing okay. No one wants to go through anything tough alone. Okay, how do we go about finding this person? Because they're outside of your network. Um, so where do you start there? Well, I think it depends again on what your specific uh, situation is. So if you are dealing with a medical diagnosis, you'd want to start researching different types of communities. So everything from MS to ALS, it's all, all these groups exist. You just have to find them. And so a lot of places to find them are Reddit, Facebook groups are a great place to start. Instagram, there are a couple hashtags you can use to start. And you'll see who are the influencers and the speakers in this community, who are the people creating accounts, who have questions or who are gonna be able to support you. And being able to find your niche in these communities is huge. All of a sudden you have a door open to all these different types of people and you don't feel as isolated or alone and it's way less stigmatizing than trying to just figure it out. Okay, you started there. Let's go further into the benefits and kind of the feedback you've heard from people, what it has you know, added for their lives. So at Fruitful Fertility, our mentees say that they love being connected to somebody who has a similar experience. So whether it's someone who has the same diagnosis as you, is the same age as you, the same religion, whatever it is, they can really help give you a new perspective. They can give you information if you're stuck or you don't know what to do next. You don't know what the next step in the process looks like. Also, it's really inspiring to see somebody who was stuck where you are, but they're not dealing with that issue anymore. They're not in the trauma. There may be a few steps ahead. So that can be really inspiring, especially if you're feeling like, this is endless and there's no way out of this. If you're in a dark place, that can really help. And having someone outside of your own personal network alleviates some of the pressure. You might feel to seem like you have it together or you're like getting better. You can have a more transparent dynamic relationship. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, um, you say that this is becoming more popular. Social mentors, more people are looking for them. So why is that? I think that we're at an interesting inflection point culturally where people are wanting to share more vulnerably and create connections that have more meat 
that aren't just flashy Instagram, perfect lifestyle images. We want to connect with one another. And especially with COVID, symptoms of anxiety and depression have been on the rise per the CDC. And I think we're all just feeling really isolated and tired of feeling like we have to figure it out by ourselves. We have these massive networks. We're all connected to the internet. And I think it's a really great way to feel connection and not feel so isolated by ourselves in our houses. Like we can find new people who can support us, even if our friends and family might not necessarily understand what we're going through. Great stuff. You can watch this interview again on WCCO.com. We'll be right back.